So this is the timing chain set that I'm going to be installing. Um, has all the guides and the sprockets and the chains. Pretty much everything that I need. Alright, once you get to this point when you have your timing chain all the way off, if you're doing this in the car, um, take the timing chain and the balance timing off. You pretty much just take the, the two tensioners off and then take the guides off. It's pretty easy to get it this far. Um, now when you go to reassemble, you're going to want to start with your balance shaft timing, which is pretty important because it stops your motor from vibrating. The first thing you're going to want to do is put your balance shaft sprockets on and you're going to want to look at it and make sure that you're putting the right one in the right spot. They are labeled intake and exhaust. There you go. Now when you put these on, you can see that they're only going to go on one way in order to put them on all the way. They're going to line up. So remember intake, exhaust, and then it's going to be 37 foot-pounds of the torque. And then you just take the same drill bit or punch or whatever that you use to get them off and put it in that hole to, to go ahead and torque them down. Then you're going to want to put your inner crank sprocket on here. Now remember that you need to have your crank at top dead center and you need to have your uh, old sprockets up here on your cams and make sure that everything is aligned. You're going to want your intake pointing at 2 o'clock and your exhaust pointing at about 10 o'clock. If for some reason all this is out of whack before you start, what you're going to want to do is move this, move your crank clockwise until your keyway right here is at the 9 o'clock or about the nine o'clock and what that's going to do is put all four of your pistons right about the middle that way you can turn these without worrying about your valves hitting any pistons all right now you can go ahead and make sure that over here on your intake side that your timing mark arrow is pointing at 12 o'clock and on your exhaust side you want it pointing at about six o'clock with your balance shaft chain, um, on the chain itself, there's supposed to be a, a, a oddball colored link, and that's that link is what you want to start on the intake. But for some reason, on my chain, all three are the same color. So I'm going to start it out and hopefully get it to where it's lining up right. Seem to have went on just perfect for me. <clears throat> so you just verify your marks, make sure they're right, and then go ahead and start putting your guides on. On this one, you're gonna want to start at the top, the top guide, which is gonna be right up here. What I like to do is that every every time I put a, one of these guides on here, I like to double check and make sure my lines, all my lines are still right where they need to be. That way I don't get, you know, all the way done and be ticked off. I got to start over. On all the timing chain guide bolts, they're going to be 89 inch pounds. You're going to want to go clockwise with them. So when you start at the top, let's go clockwise all the way around. Once you have all three of your guides in there, 
go ahead and install the tensioner. And to activate your tensioner, you just go ahead and pull the pin. But before you pull it, make sure you're 100% sure that the timing marks are all lined up perfect. At this point, it's where I like to go back through it and torque everything down. Go ahead and change this oil nozzle right here. Put the new one on. It's going to be 89 inch pounds for the torque on this. When you take this off, you want to make sure that the passageway is nice and clear. There ain't nothing, no sludge or anything in, inside. All right, now we're going to do the primary timing chain. Um, to start that, you're going to grab your new sprocket your in, for the intake. And you're going to put your chain around the marks. And you want the, the odd colored or the unique colored one to be lined up right on your intake and then you're going to feed it down through here sometimes it can be a little hard to get through here because there's a little casting block thingamajigger in the way but you can work it around now that you got the chain through there you're going to want to go ahead and just hand tighten your new bolt right here these bolts are torque to yield, you gotta new, use new ones. Hand tighten that one. Go ahead and put your outer crank sprocket on here because this is gonna be the last chance you're gonna be able to get on here. Put that on there. And then you're gonna take this timing chain guide, the one that bolts up right here in the middle, and you're gonna feed it down to the top. Now the trick is, if you go to put it down to the middle, it's going to get caught up on everything and you're going to be getting all ticked off. So what you do is you start over here on this side and you feed it in like this and it's going to drop right down in there for you. And then the torque on these are going to be the same, 89 inch pounds. Now what I did here before I started bolting it or tightening the bolt down all the way, I made sure that on that outer crank sprocket that my timing mark lined up with the timing chain link. So next you're going to want to take your other cam sprocket and this is the exhaust side so you make sure the line it lines up on the exhaust mark. You put your bolt in here without putting the sprocket all the way against the crank, the cam where it has the little lock key on there. You just hand tighten it there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a 24 millimeter wrench and put it over here on the intake side. Make sure your lines are all where you want them. And what you do is you turn your cam side counterclockwise until your exhaust side clicks in and locks into place for you. Just make sure you're visually seeing that your sprocket is getting locked in by them two little prongs or divots or whatever you want to call them on the back side of this cam. Um, if you need to, right now, or if you need to, you can grab your harmonic balancer and move your crank clockwise just a little bit. If you're going, what I mean by that is if you're up here with your wrench and you're turning your intake side and it snaps over on you. All you have to do is go down here and turn your crank clockwise just a little bit to give it just enough room 
for that keyway to catch on your exhaust side. Check all your timing marks. There should be a little bit of slack on over on your exhaust side on this chain. Now you're going to want to stall your last guide, which goes right here. Top bolt is up here. You're going to want to do the plug that for this bolt right here. After you torque it, you're going to put some thread sealing on there and it's going to be 66 foot pounds. Now you're going to go ahead and once again check all your marks. And you're going to you're going to see some slack on the chain over here, but that's what you want. Because on this step, you're going to install your tensioner up here. Finally, you're going to want to put your last guide, which is your upper timing chain guide, right up here on. And then go ahead and take your, uh, your crowbar or your long screwdriver and stick it straight down through the top and press on your tensioner. Not on the tensioner, but on this guide right here. And that's going to release your tensioner and open it up for you. If your tensioner is released, you're going to notice that there's not really any slack anywhere. Um, on this motor, you don't really have to rotate it to check it out to make sure the lines stay up, stay where they're supposed to. But if you do, remember, you got to rotate it two full times around for the timer marks all the line back up. So go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button, follow along, you never know what you're going to see me working on next.